Now with the advent of molecular tools, you can easily do these things. In the past, we didn't have access to genomic resources. But in the last 15 to 20 years, that has changed with a lot of donor support by different organizations like Rockefeller, Generation Challenge Program, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that are all driving strategies that can really help move cassava. And we're also borrowing technologies from other crops and applying them. One is the need for a lot of markers in cassava. The first genetic map was developed in 1997 and it was believed to be 80% saturated then. But then saturating that map was a very big challenge. But with the coming in of SSR markers and also SNPs of late, that is now gradually changing. So molecular markers are now helping us to fill all those genomic gaps. And now with the draft sequencing of the cassava genome, that means there's ample genomic information that we can now apply to understand the evolution of the crop itself. Because we now have those molecular markers, it means that we can actually modify breeding from the conventional concept into modern breeding. That means applying markers into breeding. We cannot do marker-assisted fracross. We cannot do marker-assisted selection. We cannot do marker-assisted recurring selection, which the Generation Challenge Program is driving. There is also the new drive to move to genomic selection. So those things offer great opportunities to cassava. Recently, we've already started seeing that uh, new varieties developed using markers are now helping to drive the breeding programs. We've seen the first cassava released with the use of mass that helped us to transfer very useful material from Latin America and is now being deployed in Africa. Mm -hmm.